what's going on guys today I'm going to be shooting videos when we talk about color grading and I'm going to be splitting this into I think it's three different parts I think that's an easier way for you guys to find it and so that you don't have to go through you know an hour long video and if there's any particular step that you already know it's easier for you to skip it so if you like that let me know and I'll keep doing that because I think that's what I'm gonna start doing so let me know if you like this idea. Anyways, we're going to be talking about color grading. And to be honest, it is perhaps one of the hardest things to teach because it is at the same time the most subjective part of the process where it is all about taste. There is really no wrong answer or no wrong way of doing things. I know we say that a lot, but I think it's particularly true when it comes to color grading. And at the same time, it is also one of the parts of the editing process that it's also oh, more technically inclined because we're going to dive deeply into some of the Photoshop tools and functions. It's not that it's hard to do, it's just hard to teach. So th this might overwhelm some people who are just starting out I don't think this lesson is for beginners. Um, having said that, let's start. Basically, what we're trying to do is to manipulate colors and stylize them in a way that, you know, creates a look. So basically, we're going from this to this in this particular image and the, the one that I'm going to use as sample. But before we do that, this video is about blending modes and how we can use them to manipulate the image. So before we get into anything else, let's talk about blending modes okay we know about layers we know that layers stack on, on one on top of the other and we know that the topmost layer has priority in viewing over the layers below now these layers in uh, can interact with one another with what we call blending modes and we can find them right here on this part of the layers panel and we have blending modes like normal dissolve darken, multiply, etc. And you can see that these blending modes are divided into sections. And, th and that's for a reason because those are groups that kind of like work together or work similarly to into what they do. So we have this first set of blending modes. They, they are going to darken the image in one way or another. And then we have these blending modes that are going to lighten the image in one way or another. And these blending modes, they work with, co with contrast. You can say that they are a mixture of the darkened blending modes and the lightened blending modes. They affect both the lightness and the darkness. These affect the contrast. These blending modes are used to be able to see the extinctions between, between one layer or another layer. I'm going to explain it a little bit better. There is, by the way, there is math that it's involved in how all these blending modes work. I'm not going to go into that because you don't really need to know it. But for those who know, there's a really great article that I'm going to link in the description below if you really want to know all of the math that is involved in all these blending modes. And then these blending modes, I use them seldomly. I use them in retouching. Uh, when it comes to color grading, not so much, but I do use them. And these will change the color in one way or another. Let's start. For example, we have, I just have in here a layer that is like, like a colored rainbow. And then I have in here a layer that is just uh, different scales of gray from white to, to black. And we can actually turn this on. So you can see these are the points that I have marked. Anyways, so let's have this layer set to a darken blending mode. What, and what it essentially did is Anything that is completely white is uh, transparent. Everything that is completely black is transparent. And anything in between kind of got darkened. Like it grabbed the lightness of the layer and applied it to the image. And then multiply does it in a more uniform way. And, and then we have color burn where it applies the same darkening, but it also messes up with the color intensity. And then we have Linear burn, which is kind of like a mixture of color burn and multiply. And then we have darken color, which is a more strict way of doing that, of doing the transparency and the darkness. But you see, this is just uh, straight on without any sort of transition. 
and then we have the lighting blending modes and you will see that they are quite pretty much the exact opposite of the darken blending modes so darken and lighten are opposite multiply and screen are opposite color burn and color dodge are opposite linear burn and linear dodge are opposite and darken color and lighten color are opposite so in here the black is completely transparent the white is completely opaque and everything else got uh, lighten by, by using the values on this layer so we can see a difference and it's the same thing this does it a little bit more uniformly this does it affecting the, the color and this is a mixture of the uh, previous two and this is just a mess then we have these uh, blending modes that deal with contrast and we have overlays of light hard drive vivid light etc and so they apply some of the darkening blending modes and the lightening blending modes so we have overlay you see how it lightens some some of the parts that were towards the white it darkens some of the parts that were towards the black and i think anything that is 50 percent gray it remains intact so if you see the pay attention to this area right here where i turn off the layer and it didn't change all right and then we have soft light which is a, a softer way of the overlay and then hard light is a harshest way where white is, is completely opaque black is completely opaque and everything in between got lightened or darkened so you see how these are a mixture of what these others do and then we have vivid light same thing linear light pin light hard mix that's pretty much all I think I should cover for this. Now I'm gonna turn this off. Here, for example, I have a just a layer filled with color red. And I'm gonna change this to simple color. And what it did is to the same pixel map that we see at the bottom, we applied a red overlay on top of it, and it just made everything without changing the luminosity. Now we're making it all red. Okay? Now the saturation, uh, it might be a little bit hard to see, but what it does is that without changing the colors, the hue and the tones of the colors, it applied the saturation of whatever I have on this layer. So for example, if I have this layer, which is gray, let me show you, just to prove, it's a solid gray. If I change this layer to saturation, it makes everything a, a scale of gray because it applied the saturation of the completely gray to these bottom rainbow layers with different shades and, and lightness and darkness. Okay, now hue, hue is a little bit harder to explain. It, it works like color, but without interfering too much with the saturation. So whatever is saturated or less saturated is gonna remain more or less saturated but it's going to apply the color of the layer that we are setting that blending mode to. Okay, I just want to now go back to the other image and explain some of the differences in some of the blending modes that are better shown in one image. Okay, so I am going to create just any kind of adjustment layer. Now, there are some blending modes in here uh, because we can we can manipulate these blending modes, we can manipulate the intensity of what they do. So let me go back to the other one. For example, in here, this one, we have it set to a saturation. We can reduce the opacity of the blending mode, and it's just gonna make it less saturated, but not completely gray. You know, it's pretty self-explanatory. In most blending modes, either changing the opacity or the fill uh, will yield the same results, except for a few of them. Okay, and again, this is on that article, so you can read it in the description if you feel like I'm either going too fast or you need a deeper explanation of this. So I'm, I'm setting this layer to hard mix. So there are eight blending modes in which fill and opacity do not yield the same results. I think it's hard light, vivid light, uh, pin light, hard mix, green, no, color dodge and color burn. But if, again, if you read the article, you will know. So here we have an effect applied at 100%. And think of this as an effect that is on top of a physical print. Somehow we have something like a transparency that is placed on top of that print that gives it this effect. 
and let's say instead of printing it with 100% of the ink, we print it with 50% of the ink. So this kind of gives it like a posterized effect where we almost like we're reducing the bit depth. And if we do that, what I say, we, where we're applying the same effect, but with 50% ink, we basically see the same, but less opaque. So you look at around his, you know, this area that is going from lightness to shadow around his face, his head. Okay. It's not changing anything. It's just making it less opaque, but, but it's the same intensity in terms of what the effect is doing. But if we change the fill, what we're going to see is we are seeing the effect applied less and less and less. So this posterized effect of just seeing a few colors, if we reduce the fill, it's applying this effect gradually. I hope you're able to see the difference. So let's say this, we are at 32 opacity and look at how it looks around his face. And as I keep going up and up and up, we start losing colors and we're starting to simplify the image until we get to this, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven or eight basic colors. And if I go to 32% opacity, as opposed to where it was right now, we can see the same type of effect just applied with less opacity, with less intensity. Okay. So that's pretty much how these layers, these eight layers, these layers that work a little bit different when you do fill versus opacity. I don't use that a lot, obviously, because I don't even know which ones they are, but the effect is there. Now, how does this all make sense? How do we apply this blending modes in the real world? because in the real world is not going to be as obvious as, as this example that I'm showing you right now with overlay and soft light and, and saturation and luminosity and, and all that. Okay. So let me go to a different image. I'm going to hide this and I'm going to go to this simple portrait. Okay. This is all natural light. Well, let's say we apply a curves adjustment layer. So I'm going to go to curves I'm going to lower this. Okay. And I'm going to increase this. And as I'm seeing this, I'm seeing the intensity of the colors change with the luminosity. But if I change the luminosity of the blending mode of the, of the corpse adjustment layer, if I change the blending mode to luminosity, we're now getting, getting we're now getting rid of that switch, switch in color because we're telling Photoshop that this layer should only affect luminosity. Okay. Now, Let's think a little bit even more out of the box. Let's have a black and white layer. This black and white adjustment layer is great for localizing the luminosity of different color channels. Okay. Well, what if we could apply that to a color image? So let's change the blending mode from normal. Okay. To again, to, to luminosity so that it doesn't affect the color. So now we're changing the blending mode luminosity to the black and white adjustment layer and to a color image, we can apply these changes. Okay. We can make this adjustment instead of going to luminosity. Let's make a new black and white adjustment layer. Let's make it, let's put it in soft light mode so that we enhance a little bit of the contrast and we keep the colors. So we make it in soft light mode. We're adding a little bit of the contrast and we can change the, the, the luminosity of each of these channels. Okay. Now another way that we can do this is let's say that we, we add a solid color adjustment layer. Let's move this. Oops. Let's make this and all like that, but we want to see through that color. So let's change the blending mode to color. So now we're only affecting the color and we're applying the color of that solid into what the, our existing photograph. And now let's mix, mix it with the opacity and let's change the opacity so that it's only warming up the image a little bit and we can combine these effects. So now this is the a colored effect. This is with a white, um, black and white contrast and with the corpse adjustment layer. And we can change the opacity of these ones as well. If we don't like it, we think that it's too strong. Okay. 
So you see how we're starting to manipulate how the image looks and the feel, the mood of the image by using adjustment layers with different blending modes. This is why blending modes are important. Now, before I finish this video, there are many other uses of blending modes beyond color grading. I was just giving you an overview of how I use them in relation to color grading. But hopefully, now that you understand the basics, when I use them for other purposes, I can just point out how I'm using it and you will be able to understand what I'm going for. All right, the next video, we're gonna talk about how to be able to see an image that has been color graded. If you want to imitate those colors, how to read color grading in images that have already been retouched for your inspiration. So stay tuned to that. I'm going to keep uploading, uploading these videos as soon as I finish editing them and as, as fast as YouTube lets me upload. All right. See you on the next one.